In this video, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes and doing a review of one of my favorite modifiers at the moment, which is the Optical Snoop by Pixapro. Hey everyone, my name is Tommy Runnels. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a portrait and travel photographer and I try and post behind the scenes videos, travel videos and tutorials as regularly as I can. So if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button to see more videos. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about my favorite modifier that I've been using for the last few weeks. And that's this. This is the Pixapro Optical Snoop. Now you're probably wondering, what's the difference between a normal Snoop and the Optical Snoop? Well, Here's the normal snoot. This is the snoot that I've been using for years now. I absolutely love it. It's a great light shaping tool. So the biggest difference between this snoot and the regular snoot is now you can insert these gobos, which is really cool. So I have 16 with me now. You can buy them in packs of four. So I've got four packs here. So this enables you to project patterns onto your subject or the background to produce creative and dramatic effects with your strobes or LED studio lights as we're using here in this example with my friend Jamie. You can use gobos to create different shapes and patterns onto the background or subject. So another reason that makes this modifier really cool is the fact that it's called an optical snoop, so the clue is in the title. This actually allows you to put a lens on the modifier. Now this can accept any Canon EF lens or any EF mount lens. At the moment, it's only a Canon fit or an EF fit lens. So right here, I've got my old Canon 50mm 1.4. You can use a 1.8. Now you have a lens in front of this modifier. You can now use your focusing ring on the lens to turn angle. You can change how harsh or how soft those shadows are hitting your subject or the background. That is awesome. Now a couple of things to bear in mind. I would recommend using a lens that's prime because they're lightweight and also the aperture is far better than any zoom lens because the higher the aperture, then the more light is going to come out through the projector, through the lens and hit your subjects. So obviously it means you don't need to use as much power if you were using an f1.4 versus an f4. But also the choice of focal length you use is also really important as well. Using this modifier, I like to use a 35 or a 50 mil, or in some cases an 85 millimeter lens. Depending on which lens you go for would determine how the shadows or how big that gobo is going to spread and hit your background. As you can see here in this example, we use one of the gobos on my buddy Jamie. This is at 35 millimeter, and then I quickly change to a 100 millimeter focal length. So you can see the difference there, how with the 100 mil, it's very close, it's very focused in, on Jamie's head versus a 35 millimeter. So it all depends really on what you wanna get out of it. If you're using a wider focal length on your own camera, then maybe you want a wider focal length on your optical snoop so that you're obviously covering more of the subject or more of the background, if that makes sense. Now, yes, the annoying thing about this is you have to have a Canon lens on this or a Canon fit lens. So if you are a Nikon shooter, then you can either do one of two things. You can either invest in a Canon 50mm 1.8, which you could probably get on eBay for about 50 pounds, or you could, which actually be even cheaper, is getting a cheap converter so that you can put your Nikon lens onto this, which again on eBay is probably only about 10 pounds. So that would probably be a cheaper option if you are a Nikon shooter, is just put a cheap old converter. It doesn't need to autofocus, it doesn't need to be that fancy because you are going to determine how sharp or how soft those shadows are hitting the background using the manual focus wheel. Not only can I use this on continuous lighting strobes, I could use this on City 600s, Pika 200s or even a speed light. Now I should mention that if you are going to use this on a Pika 200 or a speed light, then you are going to need to get yourself one of these. So this is a smart bracket. I love this bracket. I use it when I go traveling, when I'm using the Pika 200. So if you do want to see more of my travel work, then just click the card up there and that will take you to more of my travel work. But what's great about this smart bracket is it allows you to put a Pika 200 in there or a speed light in there and then I can hook that up and then attach that to a light stand and then that's ready to go. So if we take a look at this image of Tom that I took recently, we can see that I use the slit, which is this one here. So I used this one on Tom recently. So I popped that in there 
and pop that in and I used a City 600 Pro. I wanted to create a nice pocket of light so it's just hitting the side of his face so that your eye went immediately to that spot. Now you can see the, the shadows aren't completely sharp, so I did take the 85 millimeter lens ring and I did defocus it ever so slightly. But that's what I love about this modifier is the amount of control I have. I can defocus it, I can zoom in, I can use different focal lengths if I wanted to so I can get the exact shape that I want. And when it's in the modifier, I can also spin it so I can get the exact angle I want. So you're not fixed to one angle, if that makes sense. I can spin it and make it look like it's on its side, for example. So not only did I use the optical snoop, but if we flip to the behind the scenes image here, I actually use one, two, three, four um, lights on this image. So you can see in the top right, that's the optical snoop. That is our main key light that you, you can see is hitting Tom. I'm actually using the older snoop here on the far left. So if you look on the far left, I'm using that snoop, which is this one here, and that's hitting the background. That's hitting a nice circle behind him, giving me a nice little wash of light behind him. I've also got a beauty dish behind this snoot, as you can see there, that's with a grid, and that's hitting the side of Tom. So you can see when we combine this all together, sorry, I've missed one, I've also got my Ricoh 400 ring flash, and that's just filling in some of the shadows on the front of Tom. If we were just using the optical snoot on its own, hitting Tom's face, his whole body would be black. So that's why I wanted to just lift those shadows slightly and use that Ricoh 400. That, I guess, is the only downside with the optical snoot, if you want to call it a downside, is that it's the shadows are very harsh. It's a very, very hard light source. In the same shoot with Tom, I used the slit one again. This time I changed up the lighting a little bit. I don't have a behind the scenes picture to show you, I'm afraid, but let me walk you through it. So again, I'm using the slit in the same way that I used in the previous image. I'm using the Ricoh 400, again, to fill in some of those shadows hitting the side of his face that isn't lit with the optical snoot. And I also have two Pika 200s hitting the white background just to give it a nice wash of light in the background to give us a high key background but still give us a really moody portrait of Tom, if that makes sense. All right, here's another photo from a different shoot. This is with a collaboration with Panasonic. For this, we use the diagonally. We use the diagonally gobo. I inserted that into the optical snoot, except we weren't using a 50 mil or an 85 millimeter like we were using in the last shots. We were using a Samyang 35 millimeter lens, and that's because I wanted a much wider spread of light, as you can see here. Now, this isn't the only light that I was using in the shot. I was using another light as well to fill in some of those shadows again. So for that, you can see in the behind the scenes, right in the far left, you can just see the 170 centimeter softbox just poking out on the far left there. And that is just giving us a nice wash of light over the whole scene, just so it's not really, really dark. If I wanted to crush those shadows though, I could do that later on in post but I can't create light if there is no light. So that's why it's always nice to have fill lighting there, especially when you are using such a hard light source like this. In that same shoot, I went back again to my slit, my favorite one that I was using. Now, if you wanna get a little bit more fancy, I did actually ram a Magmod gel inside the holder as well, as you can see here. So not only am I getting the nice slit light, I'm also getting a nice warm glow from that light as well. So with a Magmod gel or if any gel you can fit inside the holder, you can create the appearance of sunset, which is pretty cool. Something that I really enjoyed doing and I really like to do. I even did it when I first got the modified, just so I was playing around in the studio. So here's a quick picture of me just holding the camera right in front of my face and just taking a shot with diagonally and using a Magmod. I think it was a half straw or it was a half CTO gel, but you can use a full CTO and go for a really warm look. Another great thing about this modifier is just the portability of it. I mean, it's just so small. If you've been tuned into my YouTube before, I wanted to create a kind of a doorway shape, like a slit shape effect in my recent ballet photo shoot that I did last year. If you haven't seen it, here's a quick clip from it. In order to create that doorway frame effect, I had to use cardboard boxes, I had to use apple boxes, I had to put a reflector on top just to create that hard light source. But now I don't have to worry about that, I don't have to faff around with that. I mean, it's a very good cheap alternative and it is possible, but the beauty of the optical snoot is the portability. So is this modifier for you? Well, just because I'm a portrait photographer doesn't mean that you're limited to using this only for portrait photography. This can also be used for fashion photography, food photography, 
product photography. I've seen people use this on product photography and have created some amazing results with this. Now, just a few points to mention before I sign off. The Gobos are sold separately. They come in packs of four. I've, I have four packs, I've got 16. I love them all. However, if you were only gonna buy one, I would recommend pack A. Pack A has the diagonally Gobo and also the slit Gobo, which is the ones that I've been using far more than any others. And the last thing to mention again is make sure you have a decent modern light. If you are using a speed light, yes, it will work with a smart bracket, but you just won't be able to see what shapes are being projected onto your subject or the background. So definitely use a strobe that has a decent modeling light on it so you can see exactly how the shadows and how the light is gonna fall on your subject. Especially if you're using something like a diagonally gobo so that if you wanna get those eyes in the light, you can see exactly where they're gonna hit. You can adjust it or ask the model to just lift their chin up, for example. Super handy if you have a modeling light when using this modifier. Well, that's about it from me guys thank you ever so much for watching this video if you liked it please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on youtube and as always i will see you again next time cheers guys bye bye